Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana innaka sami'un mujibu dua Allahumma an ya'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa qalbin la yakhsha' wa nafsin la tashba' wa dua'in la yusma' Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka anta alwahab Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassil li amri wahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Jazakumullah khair, everyone. It's a pleasure to be in um, Malaysia. It's a beautiful country. I hope you know how beautiful is your country. Usually you don't. You know why? It's not only you. <laughs> it's everywhere. Like when people, I live in California, and when people, well, California is beautiful, but when people come in, they say, wow, and I was like, okay, yeah, it's beautiful. In general, when we live in a blessing, what is the most dangerous part of living in a, bless in a blessing? You get used to it. And you don't know the value of it. And you take it for granted. And we call the people who does that, they are entitled. Of course, I'm going to live in a beautiful country. Of course, I have, let's say, clean water. Of course, I have air condition. So alhamdulillah, it's a beautiful country. It's beautiful. It's a blessed um, I mean, I visited more than one mosque, the Imam for Maghrib. I hope you have enjoyed his recitation. Impeccable. I, I, when I was listening, I was like, I wonder how it sounded, the Quran, when it came from the mouth of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. Subhanallah. Again, because you're used to it. When you live in the West, you don't find this very often. So be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And la in shakartum. If you are grateful, I'll give you more. And if you are not, may Allah protect us all. My punishment is severe. And the punishment here is not the punishment of the Akhirah. It is actually most of the time is here because Allah is talking about blessings. And kufr here is not kufr you don't worship Allah. Could be part of it, mainly when you are ungrateful to Allah. So number one, be grateful. Be grateful. Number one, you're alive. I really mean this. A lot of people today wish they are breathing. And you and I, walillahi alhamd. Number two, be grateful that you are what? Muslim. Don't take it again for granted. I was just told, I thought Malaysia were mainly Muslim. Turned to be 65%. Right? So you have non-Muslim around you. Some of you may interact with them daily. Right? There is no difference between me and them other than Allah chose me to be a Muslim. And this is a huge ni'mah and blessing. Allah gave you the key of Jannah. How long it will take to get to Jannah, it's a different story. But at least the key is there. Because you all in this room say, La ilaha illallah. So that's a huge blessing. Third is, is faith, faith event. You're not only a Muslim, but you also, you believe. And alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we all practice. May Allah make us practice better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us closer to him. Do even more and more, but at least we are. There's people don't. And don't look down at them. Everybody has their own reasons and circumstances. So be grateful. And being grateful comes to me, number one, I'm so grateful for, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he brought me here, this beautiful gathering. May Allah reward faith event for this beautiful organization. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me worthy of it. Make me worthy and all of us that we even are worthy to recite his words. Right? We are sinners, all of us. كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون All the children of Adam all the sons of Adam, she and he, are sinners. That's the hadith of Rasul And the best among them, those who repent. So may Allah make me worthy of talking in front of you, right? And reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I seek refuge in Allah that I remind you and I do not practice it myself. And this is a huge issue for everyone in the teaching field, even if you are teaching your children. As simple as you're a teacher at home. And woe on me, I say this to myself before anyone, if I say something and I don't practice it. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu lima taqooluna ma la taf'aloon. 
كبر مقتا عند الله أن تقولوا ما لا تفعلون الله said this in سورة الصف rose oh you believe this is you and me why do you say what you don't practice woe for those who say what they don't practice so everybody in this room young and old mother, grandmother, mother to be inshallah soon inshallah in a year or two whenever Allah decide but whenever you utter a word to teach someone you really have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you number one you practice and the best teacher and I say this as on a personal level the people who taught me the best is not by words is actually by action when I watch them she and a he so I started this by making a dua for everybody and myself and I usually seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from four things related to here related to the topic and number one is I seek refuge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us knowledge that is not beneficial and what is the non-beneficial doesn't mean has to be Islamic knowledge and it is beneficial not necessarily any knowledge that does not get me closer to Allah is non beneficial. Whether it's medicine, whether it's engineering, whether it's Quran, whether it's Islamic study, if I memorize the Quran and then I become arrogant, this is not beneficial knowledge. If you have if you have a PhD in Islamic studies and then again you are arrogant, that's not beneficial. So I seek refuge from in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a knowledge that is not beneficial. And number two is from a heart, and this is our topic for today and tomorrow, that will not surrender to Allah. And what is a heart that surrender to Allah? How many of you know the end of Surah Al-Baqarah? Show me hands. The last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Show me hands. I'm sure you all know the meaning of it. Maybe some of you know it by heart. Who doesn't know when Allah said, Qalu sami'na wa ata'na. Allah said, we hear and we obey. Does anyone doesn't know this? Yes or no? You don't know it? Or you know it? Well, Malaysia, talk to me. <laughs> right? I don't know. You know, this is my first time talking to a Malaysian crowd. So I need to know yes or no. So, the dua I just made, I seek refuge in Allah from a heart that does not surrender to Allah. That when Allah says do, I do. And when Allah says don't do, I don't. I don't look if and but and why, and I'm too young, I'm too old, I live in Malaysia, I live in America. No. Sami'na wa ata'na. Immediately. You hear, you obey. That's al qalb la yakhsha. Nafs wa min nafsin la tashba. From a nafs, a she or a he, you and me, that will never have enough. We're never satisfied. And, and I'm assuming, mashallah, tabarakallah, Malaysia is an advanced country. So you have things available. Am I correct? Alhamdulillah. I did some homework before I came. Right? Alhamdulillah. This is a ni'mah, a blessing, but it's a huge test. Which is similar to the States. If I want to go and buy something, I have no issue. I just go and buy it. These days, you don't even have to go. You just are on your laptop, even phone, and you just go to you know where, and then you order, and it comes to your door. So what happens, my nafs and your nafs gets used to things. When I don't get it, what happens? I get upset. I start complaining. Right? You order something, comes to your door. It says it's going to come tomorrow. Well, it came on Sunday. I start complaining. Or I opened it and it's like, mm, this is not what I wanted. I want something more. Or I wanted and I was so happy. A week later, what happens? I get bored. And I need something else. That's what you seek refuge in Allah. That you never have this nafs. That whatever Allah gives is not enough. You have an apartment, two bedroom, you want three. You have five bedroom apartment, you want a house. You have a house, you want a bigger one. You have a house, you want a beach house. You have a car, you have two. You know what we are, including children. Ten year old. How many of you have ten years old, a boy or a girl? Did they start nagging about a phone? 
I need it. And I look at the 10 year old, I said, really? Oh yeah, I need it. It's not I enjoy it, I want, I need it. And I was like, why? Subhanallah, nafsin la tashba. Seek refuge in Allah. These are actually four. It's the hadith of Rasulullah And the last but not the least, dua min dua in la yus la yusma. Supplication that is not heard, meaning you did not fulfill the requirements of the dua or the dua that is not pleasing to Allah. Now, one of the duas. Now we're going to get to the topic of today. Which we, inshallah, if we have enough time today, we'll cover it. And alhamdulillah, we have plenty of time tomorrow. One of the most beautiful du'as in the Quran, you probably, most of you, didn't think of it as a du'a. It's a du'a of Sayyidina Ibrahim, not about Mecca, which Allah responded. It's a du'a that Sayyidina Ibrahim did for himself. Does anyone know which du'a I'm talking about? He did it for himself. Not to Mecca, not to the children, not to the ummah, not to the nation. He did it for himself. Anybody? I was told Malaysia has a lot of huffal. I just met two. And I was about to test her, and someone saved her when they entered. So what is a dua? Just give me the idea. It's okay. I'll take the idea. I'll give you the verse. Anybody? Don't be shy. Come on. وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Give me your hearts before your ears. This is Sayyidina Ibrahim. And this is in Surah Al-Shu'ara, the poets. Now when you read the Quran, don't only, pay don't only pay attention to the verse that you are reading. Pay attention to the one before and the one before. In which context this dua came? And that's the impact, that's the power of it. Here, if you read a little bit, few ayat before, it's the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim talking to his people, which we know it very well. What are you worshipping? Wajadna aba'ana. What is these idols you are doing? We found our four parents doing it. Immediately, immediately he stood out, stood out, and he said, He made a statement. I'll translate. I want you all, young and old, male and female, to say to yourself, have you ever done that? So he stood up in front of his people, thousands, probably more, and he said, what are you worshiping? What is this? What is this? And they said, we have these idols. We found our parents doing it. We all say that. I'm not talking about worship, right? Why do you cook this way? My mom taught me. This is how she does. Right? Why do you greet me this way? This is how we do it at home. So he, they said, we found our four parents doing this. The statement. And then the dua. Now look at the statement and look at the dua. So the statement he said, do you see what you are worshipping? Do you see it? Oh, do you see what you are worshipping, you and your parents? They are my enemy. What a statement is this? They are my enemy. He was alone. One person. That's why Allah described him as ummah, as nation. Because he was alone. He stood up and he said, what you are doing, all this you are worshipping, they are my enemies. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوٌّ لِي إِنَّهُمْ it's a, it's a group, not one. Now he starts saying who he is worshipping. And if anyone asks you, who's Allah? And you don't know exactly what to answer, take this verse, couple of verses. Illa Rabbal Alameen, the Lord of the heavens, of the earth, of the jinn, of the ins. And who is he? Four things. Khalaqani fahu yahdeen. He created me, and you, us. And he guided me, and you, and us. 
Remember I said the first ni'mah after being alive that I am guided. It's not because I'm smart. It's not because I did my homework. No. A lot of people out there much smarter than you and me. And they are hard worker way more than you and me. But Allah for some reason and wisdom did not choose them. So don't feel bad. Don't look down at them. Be grateful. Because at any minute I can be that person. So he said, خَلَقَنِي فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ He created me. And he guided me. That's not it. وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ He is the one who feed me and give me drink. How many of us when you had dinner tonight or you had lunch, you said, he fed me. What do we normally say? I cooked it. I ordered it. Someone gave it to me. Send it to me. يُطْعِمُنِي He feed me. Whatever you put in your mouth. A sip of water, the food, anything. He gave it to you and to me. يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ And he gives me the drink. وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Now I am taking you till he get to the dua. See who is he. See who is he. Complete declaration of the oneness of Allah. He's not shy. I'm a Muslim. Yeah. Are you, why you're not eating? Many, I don't know about Malaysia, so I can't say here, but many of us Muslim, in Ramadan, we're a little bit shy to say, I'm a Muslim, I'm fasting. What do we say? I'm on a diet. <laughs> Subhanallah, it's sad. It's very sad. Why am I shy? And look at him. When I get sick, he cures me. He didn't say, I go to the best physician. You know, I have the best insurance. I went to the best hospital. He. And then comes to the dua. I'm going to take you quickly through. And I hope and I wish and I implore him to forgive my sins. And then he made the dua for his father. And then he came to the dua that I will share, I just shared with you. He looked at Allah and says, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ Do not disgrace me. The day of resurrection. The day they will be resurrected. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day where there, nothing will come to my veil. No children, no wealth will come to my rescue. That's his word, Sayyidina Ibrahim. Nothing, nobody will come to you or to me. This is a fact we need to live with it morning and evening. The children that you spend your life to raise them and sometimes disobey Allah, because of them, you will run away from them. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وأمه وأبيه وصاحبته وبنيه. The day of judgment will be running from each other. Every one of us. And Allah repeated this concept in the Quran. The day that yeah, the human beings, the person, she or he, yafir, run away. Not run, run away. يوم يفر المرء من أخيه, brother. In ummihi wa abi, and many way, many more than one form in the Quran, but the one that just coming to my mind. Wa ummihi wa abi, you run away from your brother or sister, real one, the blood one. Wa ummihi wa abi, and your mother and father. Wa sahibatihi wa bani, his wife and his children, or her husband and her children. So he's saying to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, "Don't disgrace me on that day. I'm gonna go alone." Standing in front of him. I call it a reminder to myself, the private interview. You know how we get scared when we have tomorrow an interview? How many of you in their life had an interview? Which one, if you ask me? The college one, the medical school one, the residency one, the job one, which one? And how do you feel the day before? 
nervous, who's scared, do all the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught you. You start memorizing them. As you are leaving, you're going to text whoever you know, depends what's your age, don't forget me in your dua. What is the best dua in an interview? Right? We all, I had this all. In that interview, no one will come to your rescue. And there will be no phone and no duas. And you are and I am in front of whom? All the faces will submit to the Hay Al Qayyum. That's how Allah described Himself, the all living, the all sustainer, the one who doesn't sleep. So here Sayyidina Ibrahim in that interview. He's not there yet, but this is in private dua. When you and me, what do we ask Allah? Give me and give me. Not Sayyidina Ibrahim. Don't disgrace me on the day they will be resurrected. Wealth and children will be of no avail. They will not help me, even if they want. Even if I want to go and rescue my mom. None. Now come. What will save me? What will save you? What will save us? This in the verse. Illa man atallaha biqalbin salim. Except that who comes to Allah with the sound heart. In case you wonder, what is this sound heart? Why this whole lecture about sound heart? How many of you know what sound heart mean? Show me hands. I'm glad that I'm giving this talk. Jazakumullah <laughs> khair faith event. And Brother Ammar, they chose the topic, I did not. And it is sad because this is not only here. Many people don't even know the concept. What is Qalbu Salim? Why the heart? Who cares about the heart in dunya? What do we care about? How beautiful she is, how smart he is, how tall she is, how rich he is, right? Who looks at somebody and says, wow, look at her heart. I want a heart like this. You're laughing. And the only thing that will save me and you that day is the, what you just laughed about. Does Allah care about my name and last name? How tall, how short? What degree? How much money I have in the bank? How many companies? How many children? How many grandchildren? He wants only one thing from me and you. 